I'm Charlie Pyatt, and in this series I'm going to be covering a personal project I've been meaning to get to for a while on the design and build of a custom virtual reality enclosure. This is going to be broken out into a 10 episode run covering design, sketching, manufacturing, 3D modeling, and 3D printing. I'm also going to get into the future of where I think all this stuff is going to go. So the actual end goal of this project is to make a custom augmented reality simulator versus a normal VR headset. AR is sort of a natural technological progression from the smartphones we have today, but instead of looking at digital content on a little physical rectangle we carry around with us everywhere, you can hang virtual displays in the world around you or interact with virtual objects sitting on your desk. Augmented reality has the potential to change how and what digital content even is, so it's something I really wanted to play around with. Now you can go out and buy an AR headset right now in products like the Microsoft HoloLens, Lenovo Think Reality, or Magic Leap, but these are not really customizable at the hardware level. What I can do instead is buy off-the-shelf parts and build something that simulates what AR glasses are like. My build strategy is going to be to take a virtual reality headset, forward-facing cameras, and hand-tracking hardware that I can mess around with using the Unreal Engine. In theory, this should allow me to rapidly make augmented reality testing environments that I can play around in. First step I like to do on a project like this is figure out the top level components that will make up the product itself. The idea here is to create a rough roadmap for getting deeper into the design details. I already know I'm going to be using three off the shelf components for this project. I'll have an Oculus 2 for my display units, a stereo camera facing forward to pass through images back to the Oculus, and a hand tracking module. This should allow me to put on the headset and see forward into the world around me, but also let me place digital assets that I can interact with in the space. For the actual parts I'm going to be designing, it's safe to assume that I'm going to need a large enclosure to house all this stuff, and then some kind of front cover or faceplate to seal it all up. I also like to start thinking about the material or process I'm going to be using for fabricating all these parts. For the main enclosure, I'm going to make that out of a 3D print. Um, it's gonna have a lot of mounts and interaction points that will need to be adjusted throughout the design of the project. So yeah, that's gonna be a 3D print for sure. What I'm gonna do that's a little weird is use machined carbon fiber sheet stock for the front cover and as infill material for those 3D printed parts. You can see that the front faceplate already has that material indication right there. Now, I've never actually used carbon fiber flat parts in a design like this before, but I think it should be an effective way to fill in some of the larger 3D printed parts that would be pretty cost effective and have an interesting style to it. The other important design decision that came out of this first step was to create a separate mounting component for the front facing camera and hand tracking sensor. Isolating those elements on their own design part will buy a whole bunch of benefits. If I later decide I want to swap out those cameras or change the positions of the cameras, I can do that without reprinting the entire enclosure. So yeah, with that, I'm done with the first outlining phase. I don't really like going too far into details at this point. It's an easy way to waste a lot of time and get hung up on things that don't really matter because there are going to be a lot of changes going forward anyway. So yeah, let's move on through it. The other unique part of this project is going to be the face gasket. On virtual reality headsets, the face gasket is the part that sits between the hard plastic enclosure that holds the displays and, well, your actual face. Most units have a one-size-fits-all solution for the face gasket that is a mass production compromise meant to fit as wide a range of faces as possible, and it ends up with a whole series of problems as a result. Things like pressure points, poor fit around the nose, and light leakage are all just kind of accepted when it comes to VR headset fitting, and I don't know, I'd like to do something different. So the plan with this design is to make a gasket that is custom fit to my face. I'm going to do that by taking a 3D scan of my face and then creating a software system that automatically generates the geometry of the face gasket itself. The end result will be built from a lattice structure that should offer lighter weight, better breathability, and just be way more comfortable because it is made specifically for my head. This gasket design will be 3D printed as well. Uh, I may look into outsourcing this print in a silicone-like material, but that could get really, really expensive. So I might just end up printing this on my home resin printer to keep the costs from getting too far out of hand. But yeah, I'll be covering all that fun stuff in a 3D printing video later on in the series. Now that I have a high-level idea of how I'm going to break up the design, I need to figure out what it might actually look like. The goal with this phase is not to come up with a finished final product, it's just to get some inspiration for overall form for the headset. Basically to try and figure out what sort of mood or emotion the product should evoke when you first see it. All the sketching has been done with a grease pencil on vellum. I like using a grease pencil at this stage because the nub end of the grease pencil is so stubby you can't really get it too caught up in the details like drawing screws or any of that stuff. 
the media kind of forces you to stick to doing form development and exploration, which is right where I want to be at this point. All right, now that we got our sketch work done, we're just going to take a photo of it and bring it right into Photoshop to start working it over. With this case, I already have the sketching done, so I'm just using Photoshop to explore materials and to get some ideas for surfacing and colors. Again, this is really just meant as a jumping off point, and I'm trying to keep things loose and not looking to complete the design in any way right now. So the big color and material direction I wanted to go in was something out of like a William Gibson novel, you know, something you would see in your head from the mid 90s. With that in mind, I went with a steel dark gray and a really hot pink detail color, which is kind of off the wall. Uh, this is sort of one of those things that's really, really gonna upset you or you'll kind of be on board with it right out of the gate, which yeah, is what I'm trying to do with this one. It's supposed to be something that is very polarizing and weird. Now we're getting to one of the first mechanical decisions I have to make. There needs to be an adjustable side and top straps on the headsets, and those straps are gonna have to have a system of uh, tightening or loosening the tension on them. Almost every VR headset on the market uses Velcro straps for this. Uh, it's just cheap and easy, but um, you know, it's not very fun. I was trying to think of ways of how I would interact with these adjustment straps, and for some reason a scene from Rambo 3 jumped into my head. There's this part of the movie where late 1980s Sylvester Stallone is tightening a bandana behind his head and going into some kind of weird kumite stick fighting scenario that I thought would just be really fun to incorporate into the design. Now I will admit, basing the future of this project off an obscure 1980s action flick seems like a pretty dumb idea, and it is, but this motion of adjusting the headset is just so satisfying, I'm just going to have to stick with it. So I have some idea for the physical move I want to do now, but uh, I still need to come up with a way, or at least a very vague idea of how to uh, accomplish that move. I think these will just be thumb screws in the back, and that will drive some kind of worm gear which rotates and pulls in uh, paracord. So the actual straps themselves will be cord or cable, uh, something that will be not too uncomfortable on the head would be nice. And this idea might go off the rails once I start trying to model it up and actually create it, but the mechanics are all isolated in the rear of the unit, so if I need to go in there with something else, it's really not that big of a deal. From there, I focused on some basic forms I could propagate throughout the design in these circle and slot shapes. Trying to get a simple set of geometry that can be repeated is a really good way to unify the whole product and make sure it doesn't degrade into a whole bunch of random shapes that are just stuck together. Kind of gives the whole thing a sense of purpose and will help a bunch later on once I start trying to 3D model this guy out, you know? I'm going to talk more about this in future videos, but part of this sketch development phase is coming up with rules that the look of the product will follow. This idea of creating rules or guidelines is really important in product design. If you look out for it, you can see this idea in all the products around you. Simple things like making all the fillets on a product the same radius or the thickness of different elements being proportional to each other doesn't happen by accident. These decisions are what gives many of the things around us a sense of being well made and well thought out. And there we have it, one finished concept. It's really fun doing this sort of thing. Usually if you're doing more professional client work, you go through a whole series of development phases and consumer research to justify every move. With something like this, I can just knock out a concept that I like and not get bogged down in having to back it up with a bunch of data or trend research. There's something that I think gets kind of lost when you're trying to appeal to as wide a range of people as possible with creative work. It's nice just to not sand down the rough edges and leave in the personality flaws of some strange concept that you're going to follow through on. So in the next video, I'm going to get into 3D modeling this thing out and do some component teardown. I'm going to tear into the guts of an Oculus 2 headset and see what's going on in there. It's gonna be fun.